Let's review what a VCF file is. VCF stands for Variant Call Format, and as opposed to a FASTA or BAM file, which store long genomic sequences, VCF files store variants only. To understand better, let's take a look at the VCF file we'll be loading into IGV. So here it is. This is the top of our VCF file. As we scroll down, we're going to see the three parts that make up a VCF, the meta information, the header, and the variants. What we see here are rows of meta information, which always start with a double hash. More importantly, we see the version of the VCF format and the reference genome that was used to call the variants in this file. Let's scroll down through the rest of the meta information until we come to the header. Believe it or not, this is one line of data. It's just so long that it needs to be wrapped onto multiple lines. Each item in the header is a column in the VCF. These first eight columns are required in VCF files and define the variant site. They are the chromosome the variant is on, its position, its name, its reference allele, its mutant or alternate allele, its quality, whether it passed the filter applied, and finally, the additional information. The remaining columns are optional and contain the sample data information. If a VCF contains data for one or more samples, then the format column specifies the sample data types and order. If a VCF doesn't have data for any samples, it won't have a format column. In this case, our VCF has genotype data for about 850 samples, which is why there is a format column followed by one column for each sample to store its genotype data for every variant. To see this in action, let's take a look at the first row of variant data. So in VCFs, every variant gets one row. So this is the information for a single variant. This is telling us that this variant called RS5548391955, is on chromosome 22 at this position. Its reference allele is T, its alternate allele is A, its quality is 100, and it passed the filter applied. Now all of this information here is in the info column, and it's made up of key value pairs separated by semicolons that summarize the data for this variant in some way. The first key, AC, stands for allele count, and it's the total number of alternate alleles across all the samples. The next key, AF, stands for allele frequency, which is how often the alternate allele occurs. The source of the allele frequency data can vary depending on how the VCF was annotated. If you want to know more about these key value pairs, or the VCF format in general, check out this VCF specification. Next, there is a GT in the format column, which tells us that there is only genotype information in the sample columns that follow. And finally, we have the genotypes of each of our samples. Our first sample is 00, zero meaning that it's homozygous for the reference allele, so its genotype is TT. But this sample way down here is 01, meaning it has one copy of the alternate allele A, so its genotype is AT. This single alternate allele across all the samples explains why the allele count in the info column is 1. If we scroll down, we can see that the VCF file continues like this. 